Hey, this is Red Rain, and better late than never, I'm going to be going over Unit Design Challenge 25 today. Uh, so, prompt for this one was as follows. There are no birds in Prismata. Okay, this is not my wording, but I want birds. Make a unit with a submitted defined flying mechanic. I don't care how. Chirp, chirp. So basically just design a flying mechanic or a unit that is flavored around flying or something of the sort. Uh, it's a pretty vague prompt. It's going to be fairly tough. I'm interested to see how people did it. Haven't looked through the submissions yet. Uh, just been slacking off a bit. Summer mode is kicking in for me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, without further ado, uh, started off with not via Moronex, uh, with Icarus, and blue, green, 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 for attack. Okay, that is a very interesting cost. I haven't seen something like that. Uh, four supply, three health. Four supply with that. Hmm. Uh, prompt blocker, flying. Attack produced by this unit is flying attack. Flying attack is blocked last and may only be blocked by units capable of producing any amount of attack. Interesting. So, first off, well, start a turn, gain two attack. Uses a flying mechanic you tried to make, but changed from capable to capable because SDR. Okay. Oh, it was originally incapable. Hmm. Yeah, that would be a bit weird. Okay, so that definitely makes the defense puzzle a little less intuitive. But I think overall that flying mechanic is probably fine. Like, it sort of disrupts the flow of the game a little bit, where it's like you can hit one button and then bam, you're defended. Just press Q, lol. Um, so I don't particularly love that. Um, Balance-wise, how is this unit? Blue, green, green. Four attack. Uh, this is kind of, I think, a little bit of an odd unit to have be like the flying unit, just because four attack it means that it's like highly variable. Like you can really cheat out this unit, uh, and when you combine that with flying, it might be kind of oppressive because if you like get this too early, there's not a good blocker that has attack suddenly you're paying no gold just blue and three green which is and like a little bit of attack that's absor for mostly absorb denial uh that could be potentially pretty scary on the other hand that costs a ton of re like a lot of resources for uh if you're like actually manually paying the attack so i don't think you would just like Buy these, even though it's flying attack. Flying attack is also not different if you breach. Are there any weird situations that can come up with flying? I guess. I guess if you have great weight, but how does flying attack? I think the blocking, the flying, I'm trying, the more I think about it, the more this way of implementing flying attack might be hard. Because what if attack plus flying attack is less than total defense, but there's nothing that can block flying attack? How would the game actually handle that? Because it wouldn't be a breach, because it's not equal to or more than the amount of damage. But then the flying attack, I guess, would breach. I guess that's fine, but then do you have like flying it? It could be weird, like if say you're playing with a scent and your scent absorbs five, does that mean one flying attack kills the scent? I guess, yeah. I think that I'm pretty sure this implementation of flying attack could be made to be consistent, but I think it's a little awkward. Uh, but I like I like the flavor of it. Um, I guess it is like sort of like what flying would be in Prismata. Part of the challenge of this prompt is that I'm not entirely sure that there is a good way to do flying uh, with Prismata. I kind of just picked the theme because, for one, it was the winner's theme, and I thought it was an interesting try. Um, and wanted to see where it went. Um, oh, it's also a blocker. That changed things. changes things a little bit. 
I think overall this unit's probably a little bit too potentially oppressive in the wrong set. Uh, like this can be really cheated out and it even blocks when you cheat it out. Um, and then on the flip side, you have like sets where this is an awkward thing to buy and you're up against like an urban century or something like that and it kind of just doesn't do much. I'm going to revisit this one because uh, I think it is a cool design. Although I'm not really getting why it's named Icarus. Like, I don't really see any, like, Icarus flavoring here in terms of, like, the mythology. But I guess that's just used as, like, a placeholder name because Icarus flies. Not really a naming contest. I'm terrible at names myself. So, moving on. This is just clarification. Read through that already. Um, amateur Microwave with the actual submission uh, right below it. Kind of funny how contest mode made that convenient. Uh, Harpy Eagle. Six blue, red, one supply, two health. Click, deal one damage to an enemy unit and exhaust three. Okay, so this is treating flying as sort of like an Apollo type effect, which I think is reasonable. Um, when I thought of flying in the game, Apollo is definitely the closest thing that I thought of to flying. I guess the way in which Apollo doesn't mirror flying is that flying just, like, works. There's not, you know, you don't have, like, say, there's no way to, like, block it. Like, you can't be blocked by other flying units that kind of just, like, shoot something. So, I think that's well more of, like, a sniper thing. Like, I don't, I don't picture Apollo as being a flying unit. But I think if I had to picture a flying effect, the closest thing in the game, I would probably picture Apollo, which is like kind of weird to me. Um, so I think this is a reasonable way to do it. Um, the unit itself, how well is it balanced? Six blue, red, uh, one supply, two health. Uh, you have to be really careful with this because obviously paying six blue, red to say kill a Lucina is pretty good and i think if you had this sort of flying mechanic and you were expected to like apply it to other units suddenly you just get like half the half in half the sense lucina is literally hard countered out um and just like lucina like units as well uh so i do think you have to be a little careful with making too many apollo like units uh, and this is also a much cheaper Apollo-like unit, because there are some, like, the, one of the things about Apollo is that it's really expensive, and it has a very specific tech requirement. So you can see it coming a mile away, and a lot of times you can just buy units that would be countered by Apollo, uh, by finagling around Apollo. So, I think this is pretty scary. Um, it doesn't do anything else is the other thing. Like, the click deal one damage to an enemy unit and exhaust three. It's got one supply, so you can't stack it. The way that this is phrased makes, makes it kind of seem like you could maybe combine it with other units. Like, right now you could combine it with Apollo to snipe, say, an Apollo. That's also pretty degenerate, by the way. I think that's probably not a thing that the Harpy Eagle should be able to do, is just the first person to buy the Parpy Eagle and the Apollo. Like, that would actually be pretty funny because Apollo with build time, you'd potentially want the second Apollo so that you can combine it with Harpy Eagle so that you can kill the Apollo. I will admit that would be one hell of a mind game. It's really funny, but probably not, like, good. Eh, maybe it's fine. Thing is, six blue red to kill a unit with... So the thing is, if you're using this to kill, like, Drone, which is, like, the standard thing you can do with this, it's really inefficient. Um, like, this is very clearly a specific tech towards units like Lucina. I think that because there's only one supply on this unit, it's a little too specific for my liking. And I'm also not entirely sure how I feel about a unit that's, like, this blatantly a hard counter to something being in the game. Like, realistically, you're going to use this unit on Lucina. I'm not even entirely sure this unit trades. 
I guess you're probably using this to kill Vivid Drone. Vivid Drone costs 8 gold and some energy thrown in here and there, which the energy is not insignificant because you usually have to buy extra engineers to get Vivid Drones. Um, and Exhaust 3 is a pretty long time, but realistically, Harpy Eagles probably still beats out Vivid Drones. You probably don't go for Vivids when you play Harpy Eagle. Um, what else does Harpy Eagle even do? Like, Tarsiers, if your opponent has an Amparilla, Shadow Fang, I guess. Like, this unit feel... I, I, I think the design is kind of cool, but I think it's a little bit too worthless in, like, base set. Like, there are units that you wouldn't buy in base set only, uh, because they're just too expensive or too clunky or too situational. But I think this, I think Harpy Eagle, like, crosses the line a little too much. Like, I think Harpy Eagle could possibly be the worst unit to buy in base set. Okay, no. This can just kill a Tarsier. This is actually, the more I'm looking at this unit, how bad is it if it just kills a Tarsier? Wait a minute, this unit's actually really, what am I even saying? This unit's pretty good. I think evaluation aside, like, the problem with this design is that it either becomes, like, a very specific, like, just hard counter bully type unit, or eventually it becomes so good that you can just use it to pick off Tarsiers, and that's probably too good. So, I'm leaning towards no on this one. Um, Alright, next we have Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail, uh, uh, Dragon Tail, some something like that. Uh, with uh, man, pronunciations are really getting me today. Uh, with that unit that has a name, uh, cost four GR, ten supply, and one health. Male Bronk. Like that. Maybe it's just. I yeah, we'll go with Male Bronk. Malabronk. I'm going to embarrass myself doing this. Uh, anyways, uh, flying. Start of turn. Well, we should announce that damage with each, for each, from each unit with flying has to be blocked by a different defender. And a defender blocking a flying unit cannot block any other damage. Okay. Um... This is a little bit similar to the first one that we saw uh, in terms of how the flying works. So, a unit blocking a flying unit can't block any other damage. Um, you do run into the same sort of... This is actually... So, you have to split... This would be really confusing from an interface perspective because this doesn't say anything about like ordering and this requires every single flying unit to be separated. So like for example this unit is 10 supply. Um so ten supply is a lot of supply. What happens if you get ten of these? You have to have ten different defenders blocking every single one. Like, from a gameplay perspective, that already seems a little bit odd to me. But I also just don't know how you'd represent, like, this opponent has, say, seven attack and ten instances of one flying attack each. Uh, and then defending that, how do you assign a blocker to be defending, like, either attack or flying attack? Um, is a little bit strange to me. I guess you could do the flying attack last, would be the idea. Like, I guess this would probably be pretty similar to the other one, except the flying units are separate. So, like, you block all the attack first. Like, trying to give the benefit of the doubt to this flying mechanic, because mechanics are weird. Uh, you would block all of the regular attack, and then that would just leave unique units that haven't been used yet. Uh, to block flying units, and then any remaining flying units would breach. Uh, which again gets weird because of like the whole like, what if a absorber is damaged type thing. 
I guess the flying unit would just pick it off. Uh, which is maybe fine. Absorbers are kind of a little bit too good, I would say, in overall. Um, although that's also part of the premise of the game, so you have to be careful with, you know, how how many different ways you have built into the game to potentially deal with absorb. Um, I think the bigger issue with this unit is that four green and red, that is just red on top of a vision turret to gain I'm assuming this is gain one flying attack if this is gain one attack there's obviously okay it has the keyword flying which um okay so it says flying up here as opposed I'm not I don't really care about that that's all just like minor wording stuff so this is so this gains one attack and the unit flies um so This is actually kind of interesting, um, but my issue with this unit is that it could not have the keyword flying, and it would already be appropriate or possibly even too good as an advanced unit. Like, the way to think about this unit is that it's a Tarsier, and you can pay a green to remove the build time too, or it's an Electrovore, and you can pay a green to remove the engineer requirement. Or it's a fission turret, and you can pay a red to remove the lifespan. And when you look at it from any of those lenses, this is a pretty efficient unit just on its own. Uh, and I think the fact that you can get like a billion of them, and the f they're all flying, and you need like a bunch of different defenders, or they're just going to pick off your engineers, or like this unit would get out of hand way too quickly. So I think given that, I probably have to say no to this one. I think this is I think the balance point's a little too far off here, and I think it could potentially be tuned to something workable, but I think it's also just a little bit clunky with how flying's done. Um yeah, so next we have Darabus with Snowy Howl. Uh, seven green, green, two supply, two health, fragile. Start a turn, gain an attack. Flying. Uh, so the flying keyword, or maybe not a keyword, either way. Uh, chill a friendly frontline unit for 11 until your next turn. What would you want to do with this? Frozen frontline units can't be targeted. You can use it to protect these vulnerable units. Huh. You can't use them as blockers, which prevents them from being overpowered. Okay. That is definitely interesting. I don't know if it works too well, but that's a cool idea. Um, I also don't entirely... Like, I think the other mechanics make more sense as this is why they're trying to be flying. Whereas this unit's like, I don't know why a flying unit clicks to chill a front line unit for 11 until the next turn. Like, that seems a little more random to me. Like, I get that it's a snowy owl and, like, probably, you know, ice themed and, like, it would make sense for a snowy owl to do it, but it, I think that's coming from the snowy part, not the owl part. So, I don't really get why the unit is flying and why. The clickability is tied to it being flying. Uh, so I think this unit does kind of violate the theme a little bit. The other problem I have with this is that I'm a little confused as to how it would work with like Ice Blade Golem or Wild Drone or Galvani Drone. Would it just mean that they can't be targeted? Like by this clause here, they can't be targeted. And then the only other thing that it says is that uh, they. Uh, what you call it. You can't do, like, you can't block with it. Um, I also don't know... Hmm. I guess that makes sense. Eleven's enough to chill a Thunderhead. But then why would you chill a Thunderhead? Like, even if the Thunderhead's about to get frontlined, the whole point is that you block with it. I think the effect is just ridiculously niche. About the best you're going to do is protect, like, an Ice Blade Golem with this unit. 
Uh, and then you can only have one. And Ice Blade Golem really scales with itself. Like, you don't usually like to buy... I mean, it could be good to buy an Ice Blade Golem in, like, the mid to late game when it can't get exploited. Or if you have this unit to stop it from being exploited. But, like... That seems pretty niche to me. I can't think of other frontline units that you would actually want to protect with this. Like, oh no, your poly wall's about to get exploited. Better make it not block anymore. Uh, and then it also costs a ton. Like, this is just 7 green green for one attack if you're not getting use out of this. So I think this unit's just too off the mark in terms of balance. Doesn't have flying. Uh, implemented in it really so I'm not feeling this one uh, so next off we have all Sadius with strike eagle 10 red red blue blue one supply one health start a turn gain three attack click pay three attack Apollo a unit may not use this ability if your opponent controls a strike eagle so I assume that okay so this is the flying mechanic uh, so basically, you can convert your attack into an Apollo effect as long as your opponent does not own a flying unit. Uh, so, obviously, if you treat Strike Eagle as the only flying unit, I mean, it's an Apollo that's less tech restrictive uh, and costs less overall uh, and has build time one uh, and it can also be three attack. So that's pretty nuts. Um, I was going to say that this unit is clearly designed with the idea that you have more flying units uh, in the game and that they can be kind of strong because you would just have your opponent get a flying unit. Um, issue there, though, is that 10 BBRR for 3 attack is like... Pretty good deal, right? Like, Sinestra costs 12 GGGR is sort of like a reference point. And I guess green is a little more flexible. But this unit is still overall cheaper. Um, and then if your opponent doesn't specifically get the Strike Eagle also, it just becomes ridiculously overpowered. Like, I think this unit could be balanced uh, by just nerfing it a little bit. Uh, I kind of like the flying idea, but I think the problem with the flying thing is that, to me, it feels like the way that you're trying to design flying units is that they're aggressively costed so that if your opponent doesn't have a flying unit, they're too good. But I think that'll just lead to too many mirrors of people buying the exact same unit. Um... Also, potentially even... Because this unit is under construction for the first turn. You just get a free Apollo shot uh, by being the first person to buy a Strike Eagle. Uh, so I think that will lead to like games where... like Maybe that's interesting, like how fast do you rush Strike Eagle? But I feel like that's sort of like... I feel like that's too much of an Elliot defense to units that are like ridiculously advantaged in terms of like, being the first person to get them. Because, like, this just... Like, if you take a normal unit like the Windsor, you're getting its effect first by buying it first. This is true with Strike Eagle, but with Strike Eagle, in addition to, like, the normal effect of gain three attack, being the first person to efficiently buy three attack is very good. You now also have the threat of an, a free Apollo shot just by getting your Strike Eagle first. Um, so... All in all, I'm not really feeling this one. Um, yeah. And then finally, we have Kagito with uh, High Flying Pelican. Uh, one green, red, ten supply, four health, fragile. Click High Flying Pelican and another unit you control. Both gain golden armor until your next turn. Niche unit, but very powerful and it's useful. Potentially allowed to red breach proof exclamation point. Like with many of your units, you have no idea what a fair price would be. Uh, so this is an interesting flying mechanic. This is actually, I want to say, the first flying mechanic where I can very intuitively feel like it could be added to the game and make sense. Like, 
it, it would be very clear how this unit worked. Although it's potentially a little confusing in term golden armor I mean is used for units that are under construction. So would golden armor just be like an effect where it's like I'm assuming it would just be an effect where it's like the unit can't be directly targeted. Um so it's just for breaches. I do think that's pretty niche, and you have to be careful with every advanced unit that you design because Niche units can often feel like you just get cheated out of a slot. Uh, High-flying pelican, though, you do have 10 supply of it. You can do some pretty funny things with it. You can go... It, it can turn any unit into a breach-proof unit, which I think is cool. Um, I feel like you could rework this unit into something that would be pretty entertaining. A uh, high-flying pelican and another unit you control both gain golden armor until your next turn. Oh, wait, you can keep reusing it. That actually kind of... I was thinking you have to keep buying high-flying pelicans in order to, like, protect a unit. And I was like, how are you going to afford this? This seems ridiculously inefficient. Um... So if the units like still attack while you're giving them golden armor, which is what it sounds like, it sounds like this is like not turning a unit to being under construction and like removing its effect. It sounds like it's just I don't know how it would interact with being a blocker if something has golden armor. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm not entirely sure that that would work either. But I do think the idea is a lot more unique. So I have to give it some props for that. Uh, like being able to play, pay one green red to make a unit, any unit you want, breach proof, I think actually seems fairly fair. Like getting a red when you're going breach proof is pretty hard. And it turns units into being less efficient. Like I can't think of any unit where it's like you slap one green red onto it and it being breach proof is suddenly OP. So, I do think the design is cool. Um, I have to give it some props for that. So, at this point I've just been mean enough today that I'm just going to not give it the blue marker, forget the red marker. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, I guess revisiting... This wasn't even designed. Uh, so, we are left with these two here. Uh, I do think this was... I mean, I don't want to be the judge here who's just nitpicky about like how thorough are you with explaining your flying mechanic. But that is pretty... That is definitely a part of this challenge. Some of these flying mechanics just like don't really make much sense to me. Um... And then some of them do make sense, like the Strike Eagle. I can... Like, I totally know how the Strike Eagle would work in the game. Uh, like, there's nothing confusing about it. I just don't think it's that interesting because suddenly it's like, hey, look, even more incentive to rush out a specific type of unit. Um, so, I guess we have our... I think I like High Flying Pelican more than Icarus just because... Like it's more clearly balanced, but maybe that's maybe that's unfair of me. Icarus is like more of a unit that you could like actually play with. Um, I don't know. No one even watches these things anyway. You'll you'll see the verdict when I uh, make the thread. Lol. Uh, thanks for watching. Says full review. Yeah, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> All right, peace.